you can see beautiful Pikes Peak at 14,140 feet. Not sure exactly how to convert that to meters for most of you in the world who might be in today. Uh, but I'll let you do that conversion yourself. I want to be respectful of your time here. I need to be respectful of my own as well. Uh, the, the next hour is probably the most important hour of my trading week. Of course, I know, as many of you know, I consider the Friday close to be the single most important uh, price of the week, and we're coming into the close of many markets have already closed in some. Uh, I enter orders on Friday, and of course, I also am right in the middle of preparing the weekend update, and so I want to move along quickly, but there are uh, points that I do need to cover and will do so. I just want to welcome uh, a number of you who are kind of new to the factor community. There are, are many of you today listening in, and and uh, I, I welcome you with my whole heart. I thank you for uh, the trust that you have placed in me, and I, I hope that I prove myself to be worthy of that trust. And also want to welcome a number of you who have tuned in and you're taking a look at what the factor is, and I hope to be able to explain that today trying to figure out uh, whether what I do might uh, might be suitable for you, of value to you, because of course at the end of the day is what I want to do is, is be be of value to you all. I want to thank uh, Trade Navigator. Trade Navigator has really in many ways be a, been a partner to Factor uh, over the years. We use their charts, we use their, their trading platform for order entry uh, on all global markets and uh, we we really appreciate uh, their partnership. Of course, they're also here right in town, which is helpful for me because I'm a computer idiot, and their programmers are within five minutes away from coming and bailing me out of problems, which they do on a pretty regular basis. So I thank Trade Navigator for providing uh, their online capabilities to us today. I, I want to talk about the factor service. I, I really want to be able to define what it is. Uh, I want to give you just a little bit of background uh, to me as a trader, uh, the route, the journey I've been on. I'll talk about the pillars of the factor service. What are the real big chunks of meat that we try to we try to bite off in, in doing what we do, and give you just some details of of what the factor service is. This first uh, uh, profile as a trader, I, I I've been a proprietary trader of futures and forex markets now over the course of five different decades, started in the 19... Uh, I started at a company called Continental Grain Company, which at the time was the second largest grain merchandiser in the world. I started trading corn spreads, uh, specializing in the Septies corn spread at, on the Chicago Board of Trade. That was 1975. Uh, when I entered the business, I entered with the, with the purpose of becoming a trader for my own account with my own money. That was my goal and uh, learned enough and spun off and founded Factor Trading Company Incorporated at the Board of Trade in 1981. Uh, I've traded for myself during that time with the exception of a six, seven year period in the 80s. I traded uh, uh, other proprietary money for a, for a firm called Commodities Corp. If you're not familiar with that, it's just a wonderful part of, uh, of commodity trading futures. It was a proprietary house. Uh, such traders as Paul Tudor Jones, Bruce Kovner, Michael Marcus, Ed Sakota, and many others came out of the Commodity Corp shop. Uh, I don't consider myself to be in their league, but it was just a thrilling opportunity to be involved in that environment. Uh, of course, some of you know me as the author of Diary of a Professional Commodity Trader, a book that frankly I won't get into right now, but a book that I I really didn't like it. Uh, it wasn't the book I wanted to produce, but I was shocked that it was the number one ranked finance book on Amazon for 25 weeks. And of course, uh, I consider that to be an honor. And earlier, uh, I wrote the Trading Commodity Futures with Classical Chart Patterns. That book is out of uh, out of print now, uh, available at a uh, too high of a price, uh, as in my opinion, uh, for new copies on Amazon. Uh, uh, from 81 to 2010, I had my performance record uh, audited in 2010, our career record as a firm. 
uh, 14 winning years, uh, four losing years. Uh, by, by the way, having a performance record audited is a very, very expensive process. Auditors do not like signing their name to audited statements verifying performance, but they took a look at my tax record, uh, FCM statements, bank deposit, then withdrawal slips, and so forth. Uh, average lose, losing year was 4.75%, uh, but yes, uh, there are winning years and there are losing years in trading. The average compounded rate of return of 41.6%. Uh, our best year during the period was an amazing 604%, which is a story all to its own. A worst year through 2010 was uh, minus 8.4%. Uh, in each $1,000 of starting capital at Factor in 1981 uh, had produced trading profits of 319000 And that's really uh, the power of compounding. Compounding is key. You know, people come in and want huge performances year in and year out and don't need huge performances year in and year out. There is a magnificent power to compound, compounding if you go into trading with the idea that it's not going to be a, a flash bang and you're out. It's going to be a process. It's going to be a multi-year endeavor. Uh, the numbers I'm most proud of as a trader is my lifetime MAR at 1.8 and uh, rolling three or Kelmar at 2.6. I, I really focus much more on risk adjusted performance than on absolute performance. Absolute performance means nothing. What good is it having uh, compounded 41% if during the process I've had seven drawdowns of 70% each? I, I mean, that has no value then whatsoever. My win rate as a trader historically has been 42%. Uh, and of course, there's been a range some years uh, quite a bit less, some years a bit more. Uh, I think, frankly, people who advertise win rates of 90% are, are not only fooling themselves, but they're robbing money from people who are willing to place money against that. Uh, since 2011, I've had four winning years and, and one losing year, which actually was my worst losing year in my career at 12.5%. I also, since 2010 audit, uh, had my longest peak to valley to new peak drawdown in my career at 14 months. And that too could be a, a story for an entire 30 minute uh, webinar because that was quite a journey in, uh, in testing my confidence as a trader and challenging everything I knew about myself. Uh, why am I doing the factor service? There, there's really four reasons that I'll go through. One is I think by writing. Uh, I, I've written about my trades ever since I became a classical chartist. I've written up every trade I've done. Uh, I do diaries. Uh, it forces me to think through a trade. It clarifies my tactical considerations. I have to think through where am I going to get in? Where am I going to get out? What am I going to risk? Um, and it really holds me to self-accountability. And, and I've written, as I've mentioned, since going back, I was going through uh, some files here the other day and I ran across this. You're not gonna be able to read it. But it, it was a, a, a self-report, an audience of one. I was the audience for this write-up. Uh, nobody else saw it, but I wrote up a, a copper trade that I wanted to do. And this was in June, 1979, just after I had really kind of locked into classical charting. And this is the kind of thing I've done throughout the years on the trade. i just show you one thing interesting. Uh, as you can see on the red dot when I did this trading plan, and my target on that document was that copper would go to $1.40. And you can see up in the top, that's where it did. It, it was a roller coaster along the way, uh, but it made it. Uh, the second reason is that I plan to retire in January 2020, and I'm, I'm sure my wife uh, w w will enforce that rule upon me. I, you know, at that point, I will have traded over six uh, uh, decades, and I think that's more than any one mortal human being ought to be able to make claim to. Uh, and, you know, I've made so many mistakes over the years. I've been through so much that it, you know, the idea that I'm just going to kind of ride off into the pasture and not be able to uh, have some of the things I've had to go through as a trader provide some benefit to other people uh, for me is just uh, not, a, not a good thought to have. And so I view the next three and a half plus years as a time for just downloading as much as I can on the things I've learned about the markets. 
uh, what I've learned, and of course mistakes, you make the same mistake more than once, sometimes more than twice, because mistakes have a way of disguising themselves in, in, in a different look. Uh, third reason is just to pay back to some people who mentored me. I, I would not be where I am as a trader today had it not been for some guys at the Board of Trade who really invested themselves in me and, and you know, I, I don't take that for granted. I, I take that with all seriousness. They they invested in me uh, and uh, I, I made it as a trader, I think, because of that. And the fourth really is just a response to so many people, so many frauds that I see in this business. It's absolutely unbelievable. I'm sure, like me, you get stuff all the time. You see things on the web, you get things by email. I'm going to show you two emails I've got just this week. That's a wealthy day trader talking about going four straight weeks without a single losing day. Uh, I mean, the only thing I can think of is, is a trader who's short gamma. And if you're a short gamma trader, you do make money every day, every week, every month, every year until you go broke. Uh, and then on, on the right, a simple system that led me to a 98% win rate. Um, you, you know, the, the, uh, I'd like to see the performance record, audited performance records, and on. I, I keep a file of this type of thing, and, and that file gets thicker every year. Um, you know, factor service is founded on four really pillars or themes. So there's four things I just keep coming back to, uh, and those of you who have been members of the factor service on a limited basis for the last two years know this. I just, I return, I return, I return to the same things. Classical charting principles, one, and that's not the way that I see charts today written like they're Star Wars charts. I'm talking about classical charting principles as laid out originally by Richard W. Schaubacher, who at the time was the editor of Fortune magazine. Uh, the second is active and aggressive risk management. And, you know, risk management is more than about using stops. I mean, risk management is a science. It's a science of probability theory. It's a science in statistics. Uh, and I take risk management much more seriously than I take trade identification. It seems like all the fraudulent ads you see and all the ways people approach you is really about trade identification, it's about trade signaling, and I consider trade signaling to be way down the list as in, uh, in, in terms of importance toward long-term profitability as a trader. Risk management uh, is, is probably number one on that list, first and foremost. If you can't keep your capital together, uh, you have no chance as a trader, and it takes three to five years to learn how to trade, and so somebody coming into trading needs to know that three years from now, they still need to have a pile of chips in front of them because it takes that long to kind of stumble through the uh, the brush and the bushes and, and, and the fast running water to, to get your bearing on which direction you want to go as a trader. Uh, the third is trading as a business. You, you know, I take trading seriously. I do the same things every day, every week of the year if I'm in the office, that is. I, I, I'm a private pilot. I know what it's like to have a checklist, and I view trading that way. It's a devotion to systematic and regular execution of best practices. Um, you know, every Friday after, my Friday afternoon every week looks exactly the same. My Monday morning every week looks exactly the same. I enter orders at the same time every day. I review orders at the same Every day. I go through the same processes over and over and over again. And in trading as a business, you have to deal with the harsh reality of market speculation. You know, trading's not an easy job. It's it's difficult. It's tough. It's 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 hard work. And it comes with ups and downs. It's just not all a, a thing of beauty and, and that's part of trading. And then the fourth is just the human aspect of market speculation. And you know, at the end of the day, uh, a trader is his own worst enemy. And successful trading is really an upstream swim against uh, against human nature. That's a, that's a line that's not mine. It originally Richard Dennis's, but but it's so true. It's overcoming all the things that you are. If you want to know who you are as a person, become a trader because you'll find that out. Um, I factor service, just a little bit of the details of it. It, it. I do a weekly update. Uh, it's usually 10 to 20 pages. It's going to be a little longer this week uh, because I'm covering a few more stocks than I normally do. I uh, usually issued uh, before noon on Sunday. Sometimes I get it out Friday late afternoon even, not that often, or Saturday. I'm working on it now. I'm probably a third of the way done through it. Uh, 
and then uh, members are sent an email with a link, and through that link they, they, they get to the update. I do periodic factor updates, uh, usually one to four pages. I did one this past week on uh, New Zealand Japanese Yen Cross. I may do them on a market. I may do them on a subject. Uh, it just depends. It's kind of uh, wherever my ran, random rambling mind takes me. And then special reports, which can be on a variety of subjects. This last year, I did one extensive one on probability theory and how probability and the sequence of returns can affect uh, the exact same uh, trading approach in very different ways, depending on when the trading approach is, is implemented in the market. And finally, uh, the Factor website, which at least initially, as we build it out, will be uh, an archive for past content. We have additional plans for the site, but uh, I'll, I'll, I'll wait to talk about those when they become a reality. Uh, markets of concentration, uh, 4X, which is both futures and spots, probably 60% of my trading. Uh, other futures, 30%. Equities, U.S. and global, 10%. Uh, I, I, we are making a, 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 a intended uh, plan to try to expand our coverage of, of equities, both U.S. and global. Um, uh, I recently wrote about how I view equity trading as part of my overall portfolio and, and what I do. And hopefully, if you've been receiving some of the past issues of the factor, you read about my perspective of that. Uh, you know, for me, I trade price. Uh, you, you, you may think I trade in a forex cross or a stock or a futures. At the end of the day, I trade price change. I'm a price change trader. That's what I trade. And it doesn't matter to me what the name is at the top of the chart. I just want good patterns. And and uh, the reason I trade futures and forex, I think, for me, it's a better use of my capital. The leverage allows me to do things that um, – cashing out on an equity position doesn't allow me to do. Uh, I get involved in somewhere between 30 and 50 trading themes per year. Um, one trading theme right now, Japanese yen. Uh, that, that for me is a trading theme. That may come in a couple different approaches into the market or ability to pyramid, but it's still part of the same trading theme. My holding time for traders, I'm a swing trader, even though I may look at patterns that are four months, six months, uh, you know, looked at a pattern this week uh, uh, on, the, on the update, which I think was 18 months long. But uh, so I look at it from one time frame and I trade it at one time frame lesser. I look at weekly charts, but I trade daily charts, and so I consider myself a swing trader. Uh, winning trades, I hold anywhere from 10 days to four months, which probably seems to be a very short period of time for equities, and I do tend to trade equity, hold equity positions for longer than that. Uh, losers, uh, less than one week, and I say less than one week because I have a trading policy uh, to always exit any loser at the end of week. If I have a loss in the position on a Friday, I don't want to hold it over the weekend. I may decide that I want to re-enter it on a Monday, but I want a clean mind coming in the following week so I don't hold losers. Um, my risk per trade uh, for a factor prop account is uh, starts at 100 basis points. When I talk about 100 basis points, it's at 1% of our trading capital, and I adjust that based on a grid that we have. It's an organized grid. I may put that out someday, but I may add to that 100 basis points. More often than not, uh, I bring that basis point level down. What's a candidate trade for me is a classical chart uh, pattern greater than 12 weeks in duration. I prefer horizontal patterns, and if you followed me and listening to me about that, you know why. And those would be uh, head and shoulders, right angle triangles, and rectangles are my favorite pattern. I think they're the easiest to trade. I think they're, uh, they've proven to be the most reliable over a period of time. Uh, I look for trades that have a measured move target of three to $5,000 per contract in the futures market or three to five thousand dollars per one hundred thousand dollars worth of a spot for exposition uh, in in the case of a stock trade I'm generally looking at a, a stock trade that can put in anywhere between a uh, hundred basis points to three hundred basis points 
or of $1,000 to $3,000 uh, per $1 million of my trading capital. So I'm not looking for quite as much uh, in the stock trade. I tend to uh, really look for stock trades that might give me a 20% price change in the, in the stock. Uh, I look for uh, a market with a decisive breakout. I want trades with have a minimum of retesting, trades that want to slop around and challenge me I really don't have time for. It. There's always going to be another better chart pattern in the book, so why do I sit and try to fight a trade that wants to test my patience over and over again? I, if I get stopped out of a trade, I may try it again. If I get stopped out a second time, that's it. I'll go on and uh, look at a shopping list for something else. Uh, I want uh, trades for me, a good trade is a trade then that has a sustained trend to or beyond price target. My current trade in the Japanese yen is an example. It's a trade that never put me into trouble, not never. Uh, it, it, it's hesitated uh, along the way, but it never put my entry into, into trouble. And for me, it's a market that has given me a sustained trend in the process. Uh, as a trader, uh, in, in my prop trading profile, I'd say that I'm 80% discretionary at the front end of a trade in terms of deciding what a trade is, what a pattern is, what is a trade that I want to be involved in. Once I make a decision that here's a trade that I want to be involved in, I, I'm, I'm, I'm only 20% discretionary, and that's where my rules kick in, and I become, uh, for the most part, 80% systematic or at least rules-based. There's a, there's a nuanced difference between being systematic and rules-based, but I, so I would say 80% rules-based. Uh, in terms of my process, just to give you a, a feel uh, for what, what it is, uh, every, tomorrow is my big day, uh, today and tomorrow. I'll, I'll go through the weekly charts, uh, 50 or so futures, contracts, forex pairs, uh, 10 to 20 stocks, and, and I'll pick out from those 10 to 15. Uh, and flag them, and, and from there I'll go to the daily chart. I don't spend much time studying chart, frankly. If I don't see a trade in the chart uh, in, in five seconds or possibility, it's time to move on. Uh, I'm always humored when people talk about going home and studying their charts. I don't really study a chart. Uh, you know, either a trade's there for me or it's not. I don't have to sit and look at it. That 10 to 15 then really becomes kind of the basis of my next week. And so I will then look at uh, five to 10 of those, and those will include uh, the markets in which I have a position, and look at those typically at the end of each day. 3.45 to 4 p.m. Mountain Time is really when I do most of my heavy lifting. That's when I look at markets. How are they going to close? Uh, do I need to change an order for the next day? I don't like moving orders around during the day. Uh, I try to place orders and live with them. And then so my orders are placed in, you know, 4 to 5 o'clock p.m. time slot, in some cases in the morning because I don't work overnight orders in quite a few markets. I will in some, but not in others uh, because it, this, they become fodder for the high-frequency trading operations to pick me off and, and pick my pocket. I don't like my pocket picked. It, it happens once in a while. That's never fun. Um, and then I set, set up text message. You may have some. You may hear some beeps here as we speak, and that's because I've got Forex markets that are rolling. Uh, I, I set up uh, uh, audible messages in my computer as well as text messages on my phone uh, with all of the key price levels that I want to look at. Uh, who are the current factor members? Uh, you do deal with a lot of institutional trading operations, hedge funds that you'd recognize, uh, a number of them large traders, uh, seasoned speculators, as well as novice and aspiring traders. Uh, you know, uh, my attitude on this is for novice and aspiring traders generally are always looking for somebody to tell them when to trade and what to trade and how to trade it. And I don't believe in that, frankly. I, I don't know. Uh, two successful traders over my career who trade the same way. And I don't think I know one trader uh, at all who has made a lot of money by just simply copying what somebody done. Uh, trading is a personal venture. That's why I try not to, you know, hand spoon, spoon feed, I'm going to do this here or there or send out alerts or tweets that I'm buying this 
or selling that because I believe that if you're going to be successful, I'll give you education. I'll give you ways to think. Uh, I look at the fact there is is really a, a, a training ground for how to think as a trader. Uh, and uh, th that's especially something novice and aspiring traders need to, need to do. And so I try to give you uh, give you the fodder for how do you want to think about a trade, uh, how you want to think about being a trader, how you th want to think about the whole press of, process of market speculation. What the factor is not is a, a real-time trade signaling or advisory service. I told you why. I mean, I'll let you know what I'm getting involved in. And my my alert this week on uh, New Zealand yen, I, I kind of spelled out how I was going to approach it, what I was going to do. And so you know what I'm trading, and you generally know what patterns I'm trading. Um, and I've given, I give you... Uh, in the factor, I'll break down trades, I'll do anatomy of trades, I'll do examinations of trades, I'll point things out so over a period of time people will become pretty accustomed to how I approach the market, but every individual has to really decide how they're going to approach the market themselves. Um, it's a lonely business. I, I mean, it's nice to have be part of a community, and of course, I, I ha I'm part of a uh, a group of about 20, 30 traders who've been around a long time that we communicate and I encourage you to, you know, find other people that you can kind of bounce ideas off of, not necessarily get trading ideas, but, but, but talk about the whole process of trading. Um, because that's it's really important and even now especially that we don't have exchange trading you've got traders sitting at home in front of a computer it's a lonely job and communities are needed uh, factor tracking account talk just briefly about that we, I used to have a factor tracking account in 2014 and a while in 2015 but uh, I discontinued it uh, because I size trades out based on number of contracts per million dollars and I you know I guess uh, I had to accept the fact that you know not not everybody's trading at that sizing and so I had to rethink that and uh, we're going to try to institute another tracking account that gets a, a little bit more specific and and tracking performance to a lesser sum of money but still working through the details but for uh, for the future, we do want to institute, again, a more formal factor tracking account, at least on the Forex side of the trading equation. Um, the factor trading community is a large group of people. It's, uh, you know, we're, we're all over the world, not as represented in Latin America, South America as I'd like to be, but for the most part, we have members of the factor community that, uh, that cover the globe. I would view it this way, uh, you know, the the old book, my first book, and if if you have a copy, you, you can look at me and see what I looked like when I was actually a young guy. I don't look that way anymore, but the photo on the inside jacket uh, was quite a bit younger. But, uh, you know, Amazon, the book sells new for six ninety five, and we provide a PDF of the book. It's no longer in print to all uh, factor members. And so as you sign up, you will get a copy of that. I look at it this way. You're going to get a book that at least some people are paying $695 for. Uh, g give the factor a try for one year. You know, I would recommend that you don't ever take a trade that I take. take. Follow me for a year. Listen to what I have to say about markets, about speculation, about the process of thinking, about the process of executing a plan, about risk management, about how to deal with, with what's going on inside your head. If you never follow a trading idea from the factor, I, I, you know, I think you will still find your membership to have immeasurable impact on your market speculation. We get emails all the time from people who may be just simply uh, stock traders in Malaysia or Australia or in the US or in the UK. And we what we hear from them is our value to them is not the we said buy this or sell that. It's 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 in how we discuss the entire process of market speculation. It's, it's about that I can go through and point out all the mistakes that I made and if I can help you avoid some mistakes, uh, that's great because in reality, learning how to trade is a matter of making mistakes. You don't you learn how to trade based on what you did wrong. 
The problem with that is sometimes you didn't do something wrong and you still take a loss. And so, you know, it takes a long period of time to figure out that do you lose on a trade because you were an idiot and did something stupid or did you lose on a trade because that's just part of trading. And, and, and to even come to the point where you can start recognizing that sometimes takes time and, and maturity as a trader. And and so I you know I I'd like to be able to say that you could follow what I have to say and the insight that I have about the markets for a year, not do a single trade that I do and still say, uh, you know I'm satisfied and that's what we hear from people who have been uh, part of the factor uh, since January 2014 when we first I first started doing this on a on a more formal basis, you know our renewal rate among uh, factor members who expire is, is close to 90%. I think that speaks for itself because that's not necessarily all 90% who are trading Forex and futures market. It's 90% among people who, who trade all kinds of markets, including markets I don't trade. Um, you know, we have a large contingency of folks who follow follow the factor from India. India is actually one of, one of the most uh, uh, large company countries in terms of the number of people that are part of the factor community and I don't generally cover individual stocks in India I covered the nifty 50 but you know it's the value of what I've been through is really what I I have to offer you I'd love to have you come aboard we, we try to do webinars quarterly and those webinars are webinars in which you send in the questions so I spend time answering the specific questions you would have of me and and I, what I don't want is well, what's your opinion of ABC stock I mean you, you need to generate that I can sometimes tell you what my opinion of a, of a chart looks like uh, and I do and I'm usually pretty good about responding to emails that come to me uh, through Jolene Not, they don't all get to me uh, but some do um, but generally, I, I want to address issues other than uh, the type of issues that you see on, on CNBC. I, I want to address real issues, issues about your challenges as a trader, issues about how, how, do, you, how do you pull the trigger after 10 straight losses. You know, how, th nobody talks about that stuff. You know, all these people that promise good results and 98% win rates don't tell you what it's like to be able to get up in the morning after you've been beaten over the head by the markets for four straight days and pull the trigger or what it's like to come to the point of confidence where you can say you know I'm going to take a leap of faith I, I'm going to I know how I'm going to trade and I'm going to follow it I'm going to follow it convincingly I'm, that doesn't mean you don't you follow it without doubt I, I mean there's times I have doubts about my trading welcome to life welcome to trading and comes with the territory and and what I try to do in the factor is be transparent upon what I'm going through emotionally what I'm experiencing as a trader uh, my ups my downs I share it all so I'd love to have you join me in this journey at least for the next three and a half years when I uh, when I say sayonara to my public presence in trading and uh, that is all I have for now and I thank you very much for attending uh, this session.